Hi, welcome to the Filmoviz Anima channel. This channel covers Hollywood movie and celebrity news, special for you movie lovers. Fall Guy dominates box office weekend, although considered less bombastic, the movie based on the television screen The Fall Guy, managed to dominate the box office weekend of May 3rd to 5th, 2024 yesterday. The film, starring Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt, grossed $28.5 million in its opening weekend, aka the first three days of its screening. The results are also quite disappointing as a summer movie opener known as the harvest season for films in gaining millions of dollars. Under the fall guy, there is the re-released 1999 film Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace with $8 million. At number 3, the tennis drama Challengers which grossed $7.6 million occupied the spot while below it, the newcomer. Horror film Tarot earned $6.5 million. At number 5, Godzilla X Kong The New Empire held strong with $4.5 million. Meanwhile, Civil War took 6th place with $3.5 million, followed by Unsung Hero with $3 million. Below that, there was Kung Fu Panda 4 with $2.4 million, then Abigail with $2.3 million and Ghostbusters, Frozen Empire in the caretaker position with $1.8 million. Next week, of the new movies it seems only Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes will stand out. The War of the Planet of the Apes sequel isn't packed with big-name actors like Owen Teague, Freya Allen and William H. Macy, but it's sure to take a bite out of the box office. Sharon Stone's casting genius, The Quick and the Dead is a 1995 Western film starring Sharon Stone. The movie was released under the Sony Pictures Entertainment banner where Stone also sat in the producer's row. Whether there is a connection or not, Stone is relatively smart when choosing casting directors and actors who play in this movie. Stone, who has an IQ of 154, aka being in genius territory, is considered right when hooking director Sam Raimi. The actress who appeared hot in Basic Instinct threatened not to join this movie if Raimi was not the director. Stone was very impressed with horror specialist Raimi's work on Army of Darkness. The scriptwriter, Simon Moore, was also very supportive of the genius idea because he was a big fan of Raimi's Evil Dead franchise. Stone's instincts also told him to choose Russell Crowe, who impressed in the hit Australian movie Romper Stomper. Crowe, who is still far from being famous and has not yet become a gladiator, was only an extra and soon shifted the main actor of the quick and the dead film. Another one, Stone was the one who forced Leonardo DiCaprio to become the kid, the mainstay young actor while shifting Sam Rockwell and Matt Damon. Until now, the Titanic star has always expressed millions of gratitude to Sharon Stone for believing in him and even paying the actor's full salary at that time. Brilliant. The troublemaker turned out T.O.B. The Rock, of the many troublemakers in the world of movies, Dwayne The Rock Johnson turns out to be one of them. The former freestyle wrestling champion turned movie superstar is getting more and more exposed on set. The latest revelation is the fact that The Rock was rumored to have had a real fight with actor Ryan Reynolds on the set of Red Notice. The Rap and TMZ reported the news of the fight as Reynolds was unable to hold his temper because The Rock arrived late to the set. Late is not a matter of minutes, one or two hours. The Rock was five hours late and that was the peak of Reynolds' anger. But this news can be muted by all parties, especially considering that The Rock is the producer of the film. Unfortunately, The Rock's bad reputation still leaked to the public. This case turned out to be a frequent occurrence on the set of other films such as Rampage, Fast and Furious which had featured his feud with Vin Diesel, and most recently Red One. With a superstar reputation and almost always selling his movies, plus his status as a producer, it's hard to beat The Rock. So far, a case of being hours late might still be tolerable. What's next? Be careful, Dwayne. Life is on wheels. What if Tobey Maguire took Spider-Man 4, the multiverse world introduced by Marvel could be a weapon. 
The thing is, Sam Raimi and Tobey Maguire are starting to have a desire to revive Spider-Man, which was made successful by the trilogy in the early 2000s. They must be jealous of Tom Holland's success with increasingly sophisticated CGI or animation technology, which helped boost the film's revenue. With the introduction of the multiverse world, this clearly opens up many opportunities for Maguire's Peter Parker to move again. Moreover, Sam Raimi has just worked on Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, while Maguire appeared in Spider-Man No Way Home, with a story full of tricks and on behalf of the multiverse. In other words, if they are not nice to Raimi and Toby, Marvel must face the danger of them making Spider-Man for that was not made. Especially now that Hollywood is hit by diversity fever, woke and various taboo things that are actually a disgrace and disrupt the order of film life. I don't know which side you're on, but if Tobey Maguire is in Spider-Man 4, a project without Holland or Andrew Garfield, deal with it. Jack O'Connell becomes Michael B. Jordan's nemesis, an untitled movie will bring together Michael B. Jordan and Jack O'Connell. Scripted, produced and directed by Ryan Coogler, the movie will have a gothic supernatural horror theme. That said, Jordan will be the protagonist while O'Connell will play the antagonist. Quite different and increasingly brave, it turns out that Hollywood allows black heroes to fight white villains. Anyway, Kugler is an African-American filmmaker who was successful thanks to his Black Panther trilogy yesterday. Jordan, who also played in the first volume, made a name for himself thanks to Sylvester Stallone who made him famous in the Creed franchise. While young actor O'Connell is best known for Angelina Jolie's Unbroken or Amy Winehouse's musical Back to Black. Kugler and his production company Proxiety Media have also cast Delroy Lindo, Jamie Lawson, Wani Mosaku, Omar Benson Miller, Lola Kirk and Hale Steinfield. The planned vampire-themed film was injected with a hefty capital of $90 million, and attracted Warner Brothers to release it on March 7, 2025. If it fails, just go back to Wakanda. Josh Brolin tried for horror again, Zachary Michael Kreger may be a lesser-known actor to the public. But if you mention the horror movie Barbarian, it could be that movie fans will immediately remember him. The movie successfully grossed 10x the amount of $4.5 million with a profit of $45 million. Better known as Zack Kreger, this young actor and director will try his luck again by making a horror movie with the same successful team as Barbarian. But the cast is missing Bill Skarsgård, Georgina Campbell and Justin Long Kreger has signed Josh Brolin, who just appeared in Dune Part 2. For Brolin, horror is not something foreign considering he used to play in the genre such as Mimic. Nightwatch, Hollow Man to Quentin Tarantino's Planet Terror. Then there's the lead actress, Julia Garner. Maybe not a newcomer, but Garner tends to be less well-known even though some of her movies like The Assistant or The Royal Hotel can jog your memory. Another one, Alden Ehrenreich. The young actor, who was used twice by Francis Ford Coppola in Twixt and Tetra, was cast by Kreger and reunited for the second time with Roland in the famous Thanos after the previous Hail Caesar. Thank you for watching, don't forget to comment, like and subscribe.